Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. Now, when it was the two hundred and seventy-third night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that Ibrahim continued. Now when I heard of this price, I feared for my head, and I knew not what to do. So I went forth of my house in disguise at midday, knowing not whither I should go. Presently I entered a broad street, which was no thoroughfare, and said in my mind, Verily, we are Allah's, and unto him we are returning. I have exposed my life to destruction. If I retrace my steps, I shall arouse suspicion. Then being still in disguise, I espied at the end of the street a Negro slave standing at his door. So I went up to him and said to him, Hast thou a place where I may abide for an hour of the day? Yes, answered he, and opening the door admitted me into a decent house, furnished with carpets and mats and cushions of leather. Then I shut the door on me and went away. And I misdoubted me he had heard of the reward offered for me. And he said to myself, He hath gone to inform against me. But as I sat pondering in my case, and boiling like cauldron over fire, behold, my host came back, accompanied by a porter, loaded with bread and meat and a new cooking pot, and gears and a new jar and new guglets and other needfuls. He made the porter set them down, and dismissing him said to me, I offer my life for thy ransom. I am a barber surgeon, and I know it would disgust thee to eat with me because of the way in which I get my livelihood. So do thou shift for thyself, and do what thou please with these things, whereon no hand hath fallen. Quoth Abraham, Now I was in sore need of food, so I cooked me a pot of meat, whose like I remember not ever to have eaten, and when I had satisfied my want, he said to me, O my Lord Allah, make me thy ransom. Art thou for wine? For indeed it gladdeneth the soul and doeth away care. I have no dislike to it, replied I, being desirous of the barber's company. So he brought me new flagons of glass, which no hand had touched, and a jar of excellent wine, and said to me, Strain for thyself to thy liking. Whereupon I cleared the wine and mixed it a most delectable draught. Then he brought me a new cup, and fruits, and flowers, and new vessels of earthenware, after which he said to me, Wilt thou give me leave to sit apart and drink of my own wine by myself, of my joy in thee and for thee? Do so, answered I. So I drank, and he drank, till the wine began to take effect upon us both. When the barber rose, and going to a closet, took out a lute of polished wood, and said to me, O oh, my lord! It is not for the like of me to ask the like of thee to sing, but it behooveth thine exceeding generosity to render my respect its due. So if thou see fit to honor thy slave, thine is the high decision. Quoth I, and indeed I thought not that he knew me, how knowest that I excel in song? He replied, Glory be to Allah, our Lord is too well renowned for that. Thou art my Lord Abraham son of al-Madihi, our caliph of yesterday, he on whose head al-Ma'um hath set a price of an hundred thousand dinars to be paid to thy betrayer, but thou art in safety with me. With Ibrahim, when I heard him say this, he was magnified in my eyes, and his loyalty and noble nature were certified to me. So I complied with his wish, and took the lute, and tuned it, and sang. And then I bethought of my severance from my children and my family, and I began to say, Be like who Yusuf to his kin restored, and honored him in gold, a captive white. May grant our prayer to reunite our lots, for Allah, Lord of worlds, hath all of the might. When the barber heard this, exceeding joy took possession of him, and he was of great good cheer. For it is said that when Abraham's neighbors heard him only sing out, Ho, oh boy, saddle the mule. They were filled with delight. Then being overborne by mirth, he said to me, O oh my Lord, wilt thou give me leave to say what comes to my mind, albeit I am not of the folk of this craft? I answered, Do so. This is of thy great courtesy and kindness. So he took the lute and sang these verses. To our beloveds we moaned our length of night, quoth they, how short the nights that us benight. Tis for the tis for the sleep like hood and veils their eyes, 
right soon but from our eyes is fair a flight when night falls dread and drear to those who love we mourn they joy to see departing light had they but dreed the we the weird the bitter dole we dree their beds like ours had bred them blight quoth ibrahim so i said to him by allah thou hast shown me a kindness o my friend and hast done away from me the pangs of sorrow let me hear more trifles of thy fashion so he sang these couplets when man keeps honor bright without a stain fair sits whatever robe to robe he feigns so jeered at me because so few we are quoth i there's ever dearth of noble men not irks us we are few while neighbors tribes count many neighbors oft our base-born strain we are a clan which holds not death reproach which amir and samul hold illest bane leave us our love of death and faded end they hate that ending and delay would gain we to our neighbors speech i give the lie but when we speak none dare give lie again quoth ibrahim when i heard these lines I was filled with huge delight and marveled with exceeding marvel. Then I slept and awoke not till past nightfall, when I washed my face with a mind full of the high worth of this barber surgeon and his passing courtesy. After which wakened him and taking out a purse I had by me containing a number of gold pieces, threw it to him, saying, I commend thee to Allah, for I am about to go forth from thee and pray thee to expend what is in this purse on thine requirements, and thou shalt have an abounding reward of me when I am quit of my fear. Quoth Ibrahim, but he returned the bag to me, saying, O oh, my lord, paupers like myself are of no value in thine eyes. But how, with due respect to my generosity, can I take a price for the boon which fortune hath vouchsafed me of thy favor and thy visit to my poor abode? Nay, if thou repeat thy words and throw the purse to me again, I will slay thee. So I put in my sleeve the purse whose weight was irksome to me. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the two hundred and seventy-fourth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that Ibrahim, son of al-Mahidi, continued, so I put in my sleeve the purse whose weight was irksome to me, and turned to depart. But when I came to the house door, he said, O my lord, of a truth, this is a safer hiding place for thee than any other, and thy keep is no burden to me. So do thou abide with me till Allah be pleased to grant thee relief. Accordingly, I turned back, saying, On condition that thou spend of the money in this purse, he made me think that he consented to this arrangement, and I abode with him some days in the utmost comfort. But perceiving that he spent none of the contents of the purse, I revolted at the idea of abiding at his charge and thought it shame to be a burden on him. So I left the house disguised in women's apparel, donning short yellow walking boots and a veil. Now as soon as I found myself in the street, I was seized with excessive fear, and going to pass the bridge, behold, I came to a place sprinkled with water where a trooper who had been in my surface looked at me and knowing me cried out saying this is he who all Ma'um wants then he laid hold of me but the love of sweet life lent me strength and i gave him and his horse a push which threw them back down into the slippery place so that he became an example to those who will take example and the folk hastened to him meanwhile I hurried my pace over the bridge and entered a main street where I saw the door of a house open and a woman standing upon the threshold. So I said to her, O oh, my lady, have pity on me and save my life, for I am a man in fear. Quoth she, Enter and welcome, and carried me into an upper dining room where she spread me a bed and brought me food, saying, Calm thy fear, for not a soul shall know of thee. As she spoke, lo, there came a loud knocking at the door. So she went and opened, and suddenly my friend, whom I had thrown down on the bridge, appeared with his head bound up, and the blood running down upon his clothes and without a horse. She asked, Oh, so and so, what accident hath befallen thee? I made prize of the young man whom the caliph seeketh, and he escaped from me. Whereupon he told her the whole story. 
So she brought out Tinder and putting it into the piece of rag bandaged his head, after which she spread him a bed and he lay sick. Then she came up to me and said, Methinks thou art the man in question. Even so, answered I. And she said, Fear not, no harm shall befall thee, and redoubled in kindness to me. So I tarried with her three days, at the end of which time she said to me, I am in fear for thee, lest yonder man happen upon thee and betray thee to what thou dreadest. So save thyself by flight. I besought her, besought her to let me stay till nightfall, and she said, There is no harm in that. So when the night came, I put on my woman's gear and betook me to the house of a freed woman who had once been our slave. When she saw me, she wept and made a show of affliction and praised Allah Almighty for my safety. Then she went forth as she would go to the market and tend on hospitable thoughts. And I fancy all was right. But ere long, suddenly I espied Ibrahim al-Musili making for the house amongst the troopers and servants and led by a woman on foot. And looking narrowly at her, behold, she was the freed woman, the mistress of the house wherein I had taken refuge. So she delivered me into their hands and I saw death face to face. They carried me in my woman's attire to al Ma'amun, who called a general council and had me brought before him. When I entered, I saluted him by the title of Caliph, saying, Peace be unto thee, O commander of the faithful. And he replied, Allah give thee neither peace nor long life. I rejoined, According to thy good pleasure, O commander of the faithful, it is for the claimant of blood revenge to decree punishment or pardon, but mercy is nigher to piety, and Allah hath set thy pardon above all other pardon, even as he made my sin to excel all other sin. So if thou punish it, it is of thine equity, and if thou pardon, it is of thy bounty. And I repeated these couplets. My sin to thee is great, but greater thy degree, so take revenge or else remit in clemency. Am I in deeds have not been generous? Generous be? Quoth Ibrahim, at this, al Ma'amun raised his head to me, and I hastened to add these two couplets. I've sinned, enormous sin, but pardon in thee lies, if pardon thou till grace, justice, and thou chastise. Then al Ma'amun bowed his head and repeated, I am, when friend would raise a rage that mote, make spittle choke me, sticking in my throat, his pardoner and pardon his offense fearing lest I should live a friend without. Quoth Ibrahim, Now, when I heard these words, I scented mercy, knowing his disposition to clemency. Then he turned to his son, Al-Abbas, and his brother, Abu Ishaq, and all his chief officers, their president, said to him, What deem ye of his case? They all counseled him to do me dead, but they differed as to the manner of my death. Then said he, to his wazir, Ahmad bin al-Khalid. And what sayest thou, O Ahmad? He answered, O commander of the faithful, and thou slay him, we find the like of thee who hath slain the like of him. But an thou pardon him, we find not the like of thee that hath pardoned the like of him. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was two hundred and seventy-fifth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when al Ma'uman, prince of the faithful, heard the words of Ahmad bin al khalid he bowed his head and began repeating, My tribe have slain that brother, mine Yumanman, yet would shoot back with shafts at him I aim. If I deal pardon, noble pardon tis, and if I shoot my bones, twill only maim. And he also recited, be mild to brother mingling what is wrong with what is right. Kindness to him continue, whether good or graceless white. Abstain from all reproaching, and he joy or vex thy sprite. Seest not that what thou lovest and what hatest go unite. That joys of longer life tide ever fade with hair turned white. That thorns on branches growing for the plucket fruit catch thy sight. Who never hath done evil, doing good for soul delight. When tried the sons of worldliness, they mostly work unright. Quoth Ibrahim, 
Now, when I heard these couplets, I withdrew my woman's veil from my head and cried out with my loudest voice, Allah is most great! By Allah the commander of the faithful, pardoneth me! Quoth he, No harm shall come to thee, O uncle. And I rejoined, O commander of the faithful, my sin is too sore for me to excuse it, and thy mercy is too much for me to speak thanks for it. And I chanted these couplets to a lively, lively motive. Who made all graces all collected, he in Abraham's loins, our seventh Iman for thee. Thou hast the hearts of men with reverence filled, in guarding all with heart humility. Rebelled I never by delusion whelmed for object other than thy clemency. And thou hast pardoned me, whose like was ne'er, pardoned through, before, through no man pled my plea. As pity little ones like Katah's young, and mother's yearning heart a son to see. Quoth Ma'aman, I say following our Lord Joseph, on whom, and on our prophet be blessing and peace, let there be no reproach cast on you this day. Allah forgiveth you, for he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Indeed, I pardon thee and restore thee to thy goods and lands, O uncle, and no harm shall befall thee. So I offered up devout prayers for him and repeated these couplets. Thou hast restored my wealth, Sands greed and air, so didst thou dinest my blood to spare. Then if I shed my blood and wealth to gain thy grace, till every shoon from foot I tear. Poor but repaying what thou lentest me, and what unloaned no man to blame would care. When I ungrateful by thy lavished boons, base then thou art beneficent I were. Then all Ma'uman showed me honor and favor, and said to me, O oh, uncle, Abu Ishaq and Al Abbas counseled me to put thee to death. So I answered, and they both counseled thee right, O commander of the faithful. But thou hast done after thine own nature and hast put away what I feared with what I hoped. Rejoined Al Ma'aman, O oh, uncle, thou didst extinguish my rancor with the modesty of thine excuse, and I have pardoned thee without making thee drink the bitterness of obligation to intercessors. Then he prostrated himself in prayer, a long while after which he raised his head and said to me, O oh, uncle, knowest thou why I prostrated myself? Answered I, Happily, thou didst this in thanksgiving to Allah for that he hath given thee the mastery over thine enemy. He replied, Such was not my design, but rather to thank Allah for having inspired me to pardon thee, and for having cleared my mind towards thee. Now tell me thy tale. So I told him all that had befallen me with the barber, the trooper, and his wife, and with my freed woman who had betrayed me. So he summoned the freed woman who was in her house, expecting the reward to be sent to her. And when she came before him, he said to her, What moved thee to deal thus with thy lord? Quoth she, Lust of money. Asked the caliph, Hast thou a child or a husband? And she answered, No. Whereupon he bade them give her an hundred stripes with a whip, and imprisoned her for life. Then he sent for the trooper and his wife, and the barber surgeon, and asked the soldier what had moved them to do thus. Lust of money, quoth he, whereupon quoth the caliph, it befitted thee to be a barber cupper, and committed him to one whom he charged to place him in a barber cupper shop, where he might learn the craft. But he showed honor to the trooper's wife, and lodged her in his place, saying, This is a woman of sound sense, and fit for matters of moment. Then said he to the barber cupper, Verily thou hast shown worth and generosity, which call for extraordinary honor. So he commanded the trooper's house, and all that was therein, to be given him, and bestowed on him a dress of honor, and in addition fifteen thousand dinars to be paid annually. And men tell the following tale concerning the city of many columned Iram, and Abdullah son of Abi Kilabah. It is related that Abdullah bin Abi Kilabah went forth in quest of a she-camel which had strayed from him. And as he was wandering the deserts of Al Yaman and the district of Saba, behold, he came upon a great city girt by a vast castle, around which were palaces and pavilions that rose high into the middle air. He made for the place, thinking to find their folk of whom he might ask concerning his she-camel. 
but when he reached it he found it desolate without a living soul in it so quoth he i alighted and hobbling my dromedary and shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day and ceased her permitted say and so do i cease my tale for the day until it be morrow